one of the funny things actually I was going to say is um, I read an article like a couple of weeks ago in the BBC about um, bit now being government policy to give squirrels birth control in tree plantations. I don't know if you saw that article. I'm no, I didn't see that article. It's, I mean, it was from the BBC, so I'm assuming it wasn't a joke because I was I was right. laughing at it. But I mean, obviously, because I, I picked this up because I, again, one of the things I saw in in the the Grow Green report was that removal of invasive species is something which which has to be done. And I know you we touched on that just before we were recording, but um, that's that's one thing that I that I I could say probably needs to happen if you're going to get a, a lot of these objectives done. And I mean, I don't know if it was obviously you'd not heard of it, but I mean, there was another one, I think, uh, injecting uh, badgers against TB. I mean, I don't know how you're going to catch all these. I mean, I think the birth control for squirrels, the idea was you'd put it on a bird feeder and then they'd come and eat yeah. it. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's an interesting idea. I, um, <clears throat> I would say in the invasive species is, is, a, is a complex issue, clearly. Um, uh, and my background, as I said before, is, is in um, kind of environmental conservation and invasive species are really important. And dealing with invasive species are a really important part of that. Um, obviously, when it comes to plant species, there's less um, of an issue. And some of them are most invasive, our most damaging invasive species in the UK are plants. So um, that, that comes into conflict with our kind of vegan beliefs less. Um, in, in other instances, um, I would say it's, it's about... You know, squirrels is a, is a great example. Um, they're treated, you know, obviously they've been here for a long time now. Um, they're ubiquitous across the UK. Um, I'm deeply and skeptical and, and always have been um, about the, um, how effective control of grey squirrels is, particularly if, you're, we're not, if they're not adjacent to a, uh, a population of red squirrels. So I think there's a belief around across the UK that we need to somehow control grey squirrels. Um, in fact, what happens to grey squirrels, if you look at the population dynamics when they're, um, when they're actually shot, is you, they, they, the same amount of resources are available there, so they have more young. So I think the shooting of grey squirrels is more associated with the economic damage so, you know, around um, certain types of forestry or uh, you know, tree damage and things like that, rather than um, damage to biodiversity. So I think that's a kind of economic question, and we would certainly be against um, the shooting of of, of squirrels for those reasons or any other reasons. Um, badgers is another interesting example. Um, in, in this instance, not uh, an invasive species, a native species. Um, what, why is, why is uh, TB such a problem for us in the UK? And why is it so easily spread? It's because we've got a country um, absolutely full of farmed animals and which it can spread between so easily. So I, I think it's about, it's a, it's a different mindset, I suppose, is to, to say from somebody in the countryside who who sees the TB and the badges as the problem, um, when actually the main vector of disease is the farmed animals. So we would just kind of flip it on its head and say, there's nothing wrong with badges. They're, an, they're a native species. They've been here for hundreds, possibly thousands of years. Um, so, you know, they're not the problem. Um, the problem is the fact that we, we are exploiting animals for food and animals inherently are um, capable of getting infectious diseases. Mm. So, yeah, I think you'd have to look at it at a case by case basis. And sometimes there are instances where, um, you know, invasive species are causing damage to, um, to native species populations. Um, and, it, and it comes into conflict with a, a vegan philosophy. Um, and, and those are a challenge, certainly. Um, but, but we would be against um, any form of lethal control. Yeah, sure. I mean, I also I think one of the other things more that people talk about with the TV is just the economic damage it does to those who rely on it. I suppose that's all that's made, made mostly the thing that's just talked about within a lot of invasive species or even just native species that cause problems, yeah. maybe uh, is it's more it's less about whether it's the badger's fault, more about, you know, the fact that 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 farmer, whoever it may be, has now lost uh, his entire income or potentially anyway, at least. But yeah. yeah, there was there was another one as well. I keep because I, keep, I actually look at these articles and as well there was another one that was in. It's not been legalized yet, I don't think, but it's been proved possible apparently. Where you you make the male of a species, in this case, grey squirrels, I think it was, uh, basically really really sexually aggressive and only able to have sexually aggressive male offspring. 
so you, I don't know how this happens because again it's too complicated for me but you basically put these you know aggressive males out into a, into a woodland and within a few generations every male in a, in a set well all squirrels are then male and basically really aggressive so then they just spread and spread and spread I don't know if you heard that one as well did you I mean um, I've not heard of that one but I've heard similar um I've 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 definitely um learned about similar dynamics within populations and there's a there's it's a good it's a good reminder that actually the the kind of see problem shoot problem <laughs> historically had in the countryside is not um always the way to go because it can it can be worse so um when um people use uh lethal methods to control um crayfish populations um as well and now crayfish are cannibalistic so you take a large crayfish large male crayfish out of the water um, then you know it's you're, you're, it literally its population booms and you suddenly get loads of crayfish who need new habitat. So this you know, inter interfering in these cycles um, in a in a lethal way can can cause more harm than good in some cases. Um, there there is lots of uh, other interesting ways to to address issues with with invasive species. Some of which uh, mo many of which wouldn't be considered considered vegan either. Um, and, and yeah, there's, there's no easy answers there, but yeah. Yeah. I just, I just thought it was a terrible idea from the sound of it because I mean, how many times are we, are we going to have to play with it to learn that? I mean, all it sounds like to me is that within a two generations, somehow nature is going to overcome this gene editing, whatever it is they're doing to them, uh, and reverse it. And all you've done is you've made an entire nation of even more sexually aggressive squirrels who are running around you know twice the size with big fangs or whatever obviously that's not not going to be true you know some sort of horror film i don't know it seems like a bad idea to like charge these squirrels up and let them go and then end up with uh, a an entire countryside full of i don't know beasts <laughs> yeah uh, well I, as, as i was say i think yeah these these things can often go uh, go wrong can't they they're not well thought through and i, I wouldn't want to comment on that I'm not sure, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of the details around it. Um, but yeah, I think um, what I would say is one solution to some of these things is, is reintroduction of, of native species. So I think in, um, uh, I believe in Gloucestershire, they reintroduced pine martins um, as an effort and they're a native mm -hmm. uh, predator in the UK um, as, as a way of controlling populations of, uh, of squirrels. And I heard actually that that's I read about that as well actually because I mean we're literally on the on the border of Gloucestershire here, and um, I think the red squirrel uh, has some sort of natural defence against it, doesn't it? Or it set, it can sense them more easily because obviously they've evolved next yeah. to each other, whereas yeah, the grey doesn't, and so it's it's sort of like a natural control. The only issue that with that though, surely, is releasing pine martins back into these areas whilst you still have uh, other life. So I mean, surely they're they're quite efficient predators from from what i can work out so you're then in danger of replacing squirrels who obviously prey on small birds and mammals with something which is more effective uh obviously i assume it would be less of them given that you know they're a predator of those things i don't know if that's true or not yeah is it, but. yeah I mean, and, and and these things need to be done carefully obviously the pine martin as opposed to the gray squirrel is, is, is a native species in the uk so the um animals that are, you know the animals in the habitats that the pine martin uh, inhabits are are historically and evolutionarily adapted to their presence. So, provided that the, there is enough, you know, provided that they have enough space and there's enough niches for for animals within that, um, then you know it shouldn't be a problem. But you're right, in, reintroductions need to be done very very carefully, <laughs> just for for the um, for the sake of the animals being reintroduced themselves as well and their welfare um, as yeah, much. Yeah. I know polecats have come back around here. I noticed them a couple of years ago, actually. I mean, we because yeah, yeah. they came from, I think they came naturally from Wales. So it was about 2010 when I first saw my first polecat splattered on the road here. And now there's every year in the breeding season, there's just, they're all over the place. So, I mean, obviously yeah. splatting on the road is not exactly a scientific method for measurement, but I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's an the first time I saw them. There, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 